Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, most definitely it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y244 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Shira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at operating an education-based franchise. In studio, I'm joined with none other than um, Jasper Ondimo, who is the director of Psych, uh, Psych Highway Academy and also an education expert. Good morning. How are you? Thank you so much. How is your morning coming along? Uh, fine. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here mm -hmm. for the first time. All right. We are glad to have you over. Thank you so much. All right. For someone who is meeting you for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I know most people have met uh, Jasper through uh, uh, mainstream media, of course. Mm -hmm. So tell us uh, what if I've missed out anything on your bio that yeah. is uh, probably you can mention uh, um, also your educational background as well. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you so much. I said um, I appreciate for you hosting me here. I think it is a bit difficult for me to describe myself who I am unless someone does it on my behalf. But you already uh, hinted it out that um, I'm basically an education expert. I'm, I'm more into education affair issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I commentate on a range of uh, education matters, mm -hmm. and um, I, I also do some um, sole proprietorship. I do have a school that um, I'm running. So basically, that is all about me. All right. Yeah. So the reason why you are here it's bec uh, because uh, when matters of entrepreneurship, you run a sole proprietorship. So tell us, uh, what is your entrepreneurship journey? Um, when I can't say. Or yes. Yeah, I can't say that um, it has been an easy one. It has been a tough one. I mean. You know, diving from employment, uh, you entering into a new entity that you're not used to. It is uncharted waters. It has been really tough, but the hope is that when you look at the future, you see how the future is bright and you have the resilience that it takes and you keep on, uh, you, you keep moving. Uh, for me, mine started uh, during the COVID time. Uh, I was a teacher and, you know, for teachers during the COVID season, it was an opportunity to do something uh, new for those who could have decided to utilize that particular opportunity because then I wasn't attached to my place of employment so I could I could do a lot and um, that is when I, an idea of starting a school mm -hmm. uh, came about and then um, I shared with some of my friends whom I knew um, were interested in um, uh, starting a school so I got one of my friends and then we pulled uh, resources and then we began and the journey begins with first looking at what are some of the statutory uh, requirements uh, requirement for example you don't just wake up today and say I'm starting a school and if that was the case then everybody could be owning a school mm -hmm. so first of all you must look at what are the requirements uh, that you're supposed to meet before you start a school Very true. because the Ministry of Education uh, outlines those particular requirements. Oh, before we get, even get to the requirements that are, requ uh, that are needed yeah. to, start a, uh, to, to start a school, let's look at the transition. How is it transitioning from employment to now, uh, whereby you're expecting mm -hmm. a check every single month, you're sure of that, yeah, yeah. now you're in a space whereby <laughs> <laughs> you're your own boss, but literally uh, you have a lot that goes around it. Mm -hmm. So how was that transition for you? Um, I can say it's really tough, but um, somehow I, I, I had my, my savings and then I also had an opportunity to take some coins from here, my friends here and there, at least for a start um, uh, to, to, to get going. So I can say that um, it was a bit tough, but also, I mean, there's some contentment that you as a person you can have that you're doing something that is going to benefit you that uh, i mean sometime in the future you'll not be in employment you'll not be i can call it kind of begging you mm -hmm. know so that particular motivation will keep on uh, i mean will enable you to move on but um, i i do not necessarily advocate against employment because mm -hmm. everyone in employment always wishes to start a business mm -hmm. but then you look at um, i mean how tough the ce is getting out and uh, trying to move on so i think some do not have that particular courage 
and also the issue about resources you cannot just leave employment and start to start my own business mm -hmm. you're likely to to, uh, to fail so i can say um it was a bit tough but i think i was well prepared okay. and um yeah i had some <laughs> cash here and there uh speaking about being prepared let's yeah. look was there was there a business plan? Was there like a budget for this? What are, what are a couple of requirements that are needed when studying a school? That is, um, first of it, uh, first of it, I said um, you look at the statutory requirements. Okay. The Ministry of Education. What requirements are there for you to start a school? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, they must look at the the size of mm -hmm. the land mm -hmm. that that you have. Then um, the issues about uh, teachers. Do you have qualified teachers who are registered with the teacher? A service Commission, uh, is there uh, a playing ground for those uh, particular children? Have you complied with the health uh, requirements? Mm -hmm. So the, the first thing you do is you start, then you will invite the, the, the regulatory body, that is uh, the Ministry of Education, they'll come and assess, they'll give you a provisional certificate, mm -hmm. and then now uh, you'll start running. So especially for us, for example, I think where it was a bit tough is um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, when you're starting, you do not have the, the pupils. They're not as much as um, you wish to have them. And here you have the teachers that you love to pay. I mean, at the end of the month, you'll not tell them, you know, these are startups, so mm -hmm. please, can you be patient with us? At least they're expecting something uh, 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 for, uh, for themselves. And what really helped us to begin well is during that time of COVID, you know, the school is in an estate and we ac accommodated a lot of children we were teaching them while observing the COVID-19 protocols. Mm -hmm. And we really ensured that um, these particular children that we were teaching, because that time there was no, uh, the, the schools were closed, and mm -hmm. we really ensured that these children that we have here, that we're doing our tuition to, let us retain them by all means. Okay. So we put, we put a lot of incentives, mm -hmm. buying them sweets here and there, <laughs> talking to their parents and all that. And... Out of 30, we were uh -huh. able to retain about 21. Oh, right. And that was, that was a good thing. It's not easy that you'll get someone transfer from um, his school or uh -huh. the parent to transfer the child from uh, the school that uh, the child was uh -huh. to a new school. So uh -huh. I think that was a good startup for us. Oh, right. And in the quest of just retaining your clients in this situation, young kids. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the parents who were actually also involved. Mm -hmm. So what is your marketing strategy? Because it, I feel it's quite different when it comes to an educational-based uh, kind of a business mm -hmm. uh, compared to whereby I'm selling a product, yeah. which is a moving product real sure, quick. Sure. So uh, what, mm -hmm. what has been your strategy? Um, as we began during that particular period, around one month, mm -hmm. we ensured that the teachers were doing a nice job, such that when the child goes home, the parent will be able to look at the exercise book. <laughs> then the, the, the parent will be amazed by what the teacher has written there and uh, how the teachers were very nice to these particular children. You know, young, young kids are very easy to, to, to manipulate and um, mm -hmm. to buy them. So we really ensured that uh, the teachers were very friendly to them, very kind to them, playing with them, uh, marking the exercise books on a regular basis. Um, we organized even taking them for swimming uh, classes. We also did things like um, horse riding. Mm -hmm. We brought horses there, the, 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 the pupils were riding. So we really uh, did quite different from the, the, the traditional schools there uh, uh, do. And most people were just, were just amazed and had, at how we were doing that particular marketing. So we really pumped a lot of uh, resources. We did the, uh, the road shows as well. So that particular time, it was really uh, a period of doing marketing. Although we've scaled it uh, a bit, uh, down a bit, mm -hmm. but I think 90% um, of the success we can attribute it to marketing because no person is going to just come to, um, to a new school. As we say, perhaps in Kiswahili, mm -hmm. even there are some people who are telling me, or you can hear some uh, side talk, since at West Yanzisha Shule, wacha yendele alafu tutakuja. Afterwards, eh? yeah, so you are already disadvantaged. It's a new school, so you must do everything to ensure that you get these particular parents, you get these particular children, and there's no shortcut about it. Otherwise, it is going to be ordinary and you're going to take a very long time to pick up.
Oh, why? And there's so many schools that are out there, like when it comes to kindergartens and just what, what is so different about you guys? What problems are you solving? And what's your niche in the market mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes you like stand out? Um, one weakness that most schools have, and it is um, an, an advantage, especially for me, when a parent comes, he is meeting a teacher or the director is a teacher. There are some schools you'll find, maybe it is someone who has a background in um, agriculture, someone who has a background in economics, even journalism, mm -hmm. uh, or even issues to do with um, entrepreneurship and all that. So someone decided to say, I'm starting a school. At least for me, I know, like, if I've employed a teacher, I know what are some of the issues that I'll be checking. So you have an advantage that this particular uh, school is run by a professional. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, compared to other schools where you can find maybe someone has just started a business. At least for me, it is not really a business. Of course, you are going to gain. But then as you gain, are you transforming the lives of these particular children? So that is the first advantage that someone who is heading this school um, is well versed with matters um, of education. So, I mean, um, of course, education is also um, like w what we call, what we say, it is a calling that mm -hmm. not everybody can offer education. Mm -hmm. And education is also um, a whole thing in its own, that mm -hmm. it is not about cramming and all that, but changing the lives of these particular children. Mm -hmm. Even uh, you, Michelle, I know there is a teacher, at some point you remember, maybe in primary school, in high school, apart from content yes. delivery, that teacher was doing something unique. Impactful. Yeah, impactful, uh, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. I remember uh, my business uh, uh, teacher in high school. Okay. Yeah, she was very impactful in my life. <laughs> yeah, even me, I remember a, a certain teacher of Fasihi uh -huh. who was uh, so good and used to give us some life lessons. You know, uh -huh. sometimes as much as content is necessary, uh -huh. um, advising these children is also a uh, key. Absolutely. Speaking about advising uh, people out here, mm -hmm. for someone who is watching this conversation and they have that, of course, you mentioned something which is very critical, that for you, what is the, the niche when people come to probably uh, your school-based uh, franchise is the fact mm -hmm. that your background is in teaching. How mm -hmm. important is it for if uh, anyone wants to venture into any sort of business that they should be passionate? How fundamental is it? Mm -hmm. uh, first, you must understand what it takes to run that particular business. For example, if you want to start a school, mm -hmm. what does it take um, having a school? What are some of the requirements? They should be um, on your fingertips. And then the most critical one is have experts mm -hmm. in that field um, do for you that job mm -hmm. if you're not an expert. For example, if you're starting a school and you are not uh, vast with education, you're not vast with, with teaching, you can get um, a good manager who is a teacher who is going to manage for you that um, particular school. And also um, try to give these particular people you have employed some space. Mm -hmm. It should not be like, um, you know, it is like uh, a religious routine mm -hmm. but let them be happy coming to that uh, place of work so most importantly it is all about resources mm -hmm. so can you first have those uh, resources at place of course you might not have everything but you can start mm -hmm. from somewhere so know how much money do you need for example if you're starting a school you look uh, you look at uh, land issues the structure um, uh, the facilities you need, the issues are about desks, the teachers. So just know what it is required for you to uh, to run it. And it is always good to talk to people who have already done it. For example, I believe for me, if I did not have someone who is already uh, having a school, I could not have managed. If I just went like, mm -hmm. oh, now I want to start a school. Mm -hmm. And then now, oh, oh, let me follow these things. Mm -hmm. No. Just look at a person who has already done it. For example, a person like me can be able to tell someone, here you can do this, you can do that. So have mm. someone who has already gone ahead of you. Mm, to avoid mistakes, which uh, to avoid like a couple of mistakes. Absolutely, which absolutely. Will yeah. End up like ruining you. So let's look at a couple of uh, mm -hmm. uh, things that uh, challenges that comes with uh, running a, a school at the initial stage when just starting off. 
Um, the first one is uh, the staff. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in education, you just get immediate feedback. So if you don't have a good teacher, and uh, sometimes it might take you time to realize this person is not a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And by the time you realize this person is not a good teacher, you've already lost about five children. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the children have gone home, they have said, teacher nani alini chapa, teacher nani alini chuna. And some parents might not even want to know, okay, aliku chuna kwa nini, let me go and inquire from okay. the management. Mm -hmm. So some will develop a negative attitude. And some of these preschools, um, it is very easy to lose children because uh, you know, some of the parents are quite young. They'll go and meet in their state or say, Maybe you should, ah, you should and that word will spread. The name of the school. Yeah, and that and that word will spread in the entire estate. By uh -huh. the time you want to redeem yourself, mm -hmm. or you might not actually redeem yourself. I have a friend of mine uh, who told me that uh, uh, he sacked. He's a director. He sacked one of the uh, PP1 teachers, mm -hmm. and then. The teacher went with some pupils. Kambia, okay, umenifuta kazi. Nambia pia mimi takuonyesha. Mm -hmm. So, yule mwalimu alipondoka, akaondoka na, na wanafunzi. Mm -hmm. So, it has taken several years for that particular school to be where it was, especially the, the PP1 mm -hmm. uh, section. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes uh, there could be those issues of human resource. If you don't get good, uh, good teachers, they can easily uh, ruin your school. And sometimes um, other issues can include... Um, I mean, steady, uh, can call it, um, you know, the schools rely on school fees. Mm -hmm. So you'll find maybe some parents um, who have come to school, they'll say, ah, mwalimu, usijali intalipa mwisho wa mwezi. Mwisho wa mwezi kifika, maybe it is the end of the term, mm -hmm. amehama saika, ama amehama akaenda eh, same nyingine. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll just say, okay, you lose that particular uh, school fees and all that, then payment of salaries here and there, but uh, it needs a lot of uh, strategizing mm -hmm. and planning so that you don't uh, get yourself into unnecessary trouble in the initial stages. Okay. Looking back, do you regret it? And would you say uh, running a school uh, franchise is a profitable business? I don't regret mm -hmm. um, starting it off mm -hmm. uh, because... Uh, we, we've we've been on progress under okay. a year, and oh. we've made really uh, great uh, strides. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is a profitable venture, yes. Um, of course, if you put in the right energy, the right uh, human resource, mm -hmm. uh, if you do the right thing, then it is going to be profitable mm -hmm. uh, for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, even some of these big names you hear right now. A good example is um, Lakewood. Mm -hmm. Uh, schools. Um, they began with uh, three rented rooms and right now you're talking you're talking about um, a multi-million school. So it is profitable so long as you be patient and also as I'm, as I'm emphasizing that okay. uh, do not focus more on money because mm -hmm. this is something that can bring you money if you change the lives of those particular children. If they pass then you'll automatically have those particular uh, children come and then the school is going to be eventually profitable so if you prioritize more on impacting the children mm -hmm. then money will just come directly to you all right it's inevitable so let's look at the competence-based curriculum mm -hmm. uh, most people have so many questions about uh, the cbc right so uh first of all like i would like to find out how does it look on the level like at the university level of course, uh, right now CBC is at uh, grade five, mm -hmm. and there is hope. Uh, some people have hope that it is going to go all the way to the university. You don't think so? Uh, for me, I I do have my reservations. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, I'll be able to share why I do have those particular reservations. Um, at the university level, it is focusing more on um, the skills of these particular mm -hmm. uh, learners. Mm -hmm. that those who are well endowed in arts mm -hmm. and languages, they'll, and science. Yeah, they'll, they'll go that particular path. Mm -hmm. Those ones for sciences, they'll go to the path of uh, sciences. But right now, uh, C CBC is uh, facing a lot of uh, challenges. Number one, uh, some people believe that it was a rushed process. Uh, I mean, 
in in a country where most parents 90% of the parents do not understand what CBC is all about mm -hmm. if you just go to the streets and ask a parent can you tell me uh, for example um, how many grades do we have for instance mm -hmm. or at junior secondary which grade are we talking about mm -hmm. at uh, a, a senior secondary which grade are we talking about the parents uh, are, are do not know um, about uh, this particular uh, yeah. curriculum mm -hmm. and you have cases where children are coming home to do homework you can imagine i mean you've been busy here mm -hmm. throughout the uh, the day then you go home and you are expected to help your daughter or your son to do some assignment which is okay but you mm -hmm. find that some of these assignments are technical in nature or mm -hmm. they require some form of learning mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, according to data, about 10% of Kenyans are the ones that um, are educated. So what happens to these other children um, who go home and uh, the parent does not understand anything about education? Of course, as much as interacting with your child is okay, doing homework together is a good thing. But we are uh, burdening parents. We are also disadvantaging children who do not have a uh, good background, ac academic uh, uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And then um, you look at even the transition, how it is supposed uh, to be. For example, in 2023, we are supposed to have the first, uh, um, the first CBC cohort joining a uh, junior secondary and that is when we shall have the last 844 mm. uh, uh, candidates so we shall have what we call um, a double transition of about two million learners so the question is do we have capacity to host two million learners in secondary school mm -hmm. the answer is no is the is the government constructing schools to accommodate these particular children the answer is uh, in the negative, unless there is someone who has seen the government uh, constructing schools um, somewhere. So mm -hmm. for me, I believe uh, CBC, of course, is a good curriculum. No, no doubt about it. It has worked in other countries that are well resourced. But mm -hmm. in the Kenyan context, we have um, we are in a situation where we cannot be able to fund properly mm -hmm. this competence-based uh, uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. But if we're resourced, it can mm -hmm. work. But Kenya being a third world country, mm -hmm. as much as we, as much as um, the nationals, the Kenyan budget, most of it goes to education, but still it might not work. And um, I'm premonitioning a scenario where, like the one, uh, you remember C.S. Amina Mohammed at some point, uh, saying that uh, CBC is not going to continue, we're going to revert back to it for four. Yes, yes, yes. I see a, a similar situation come 2023 oh, where we shall just say, okay, let pu let's put this thing on hold. Okay. Yeah. Would you, do you feel like, or rather, do you believe that stu uh, sorry, uh, teachers are well equipped and informed on matters and trained mm -hmm. on matters uh, about the new, the new curriculum or yeah. CBC? Um, yeah. Or are they misleading? Are we doing... We mm -hmm. have a situation where they are misleading. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, in a normal scenario, what could have happened is first you train the teachers. Before you roll out the curriculum, you mm -hmm. first train the teachers. It is like a new machine being brought here. And then you have, uh, I, she told me her name is Gloria. Oh, yes. You bring a new machine and then you tell Gloria, now Gloria, this machine you will be able to learn it as, as time progresses. And maybe the machine is quite complicated. So at least... Uh, the training could have started in teacher training colleges and universities. There's no university right now which is teaching CBC. And then you wonder now, how are these particular children going to be taught? Mm -hmm. For example, there is, um, uh, there is a, a, a subject called science and technology. Mm -hmm. It is all about computers. Mm -hmm. the, teachers, the teacher training colleges have not been teaching computer. So who is going to teach these particular learners matters of uh, computer? Mm -hmm. So... The curriculum was rushed, and I believe uh, uh, perhaps it was for leaving a legacy, um, a legacy uh, for the uh, for those in leadership mm -hmm. at the moment. So, uh, as much as the curriculum review was inevitable, I think it was rushed, and uh, we might have to pay mm -hmm. uh, some time in the future mm -hmm. if we do not take an objective. There's so many step. questions that surround. Uh, the new curriculum, the CBC. Yeah. Uh, just as we wind up, uh, I think one of the outstanding questions for most parents will be how would you rate a pass from a failing, uh, considering there's no positions. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the fact that it focuses more about on the skills of a student, that is 
most definitely amazing. But mm. now how do you how how are you going to wait a password? Yeah, password? firstly, that is where the problem is focusing on skill. Because when you talk about when you talk to a PP one, a PP one child is about three years. PP2 is about four years. Then you have grade one. Grade mm -hmm. one is uh, class five. Mm -hmm. So when you teach um, competence, wh what, are you what are you telling a, a PP1 child? That he should be <laughs> competent in what? I mean, at PP1 or PP2, one mm -hmm. is supposed to learn issues of number work, mm -hmm. uh, learning how to say hello, how to greet someone, uh, learning about hygiene. There's nothing about competence you can teach to a young child. Competence comes at the higher levels. Maybe uh, from in high school, yeah, from so about okay. form one, form two, that is when you start uh, learning about careers. Yes. Yeah, you are aware about yourself. Yes. So that is that is the first uh, the, the first mistake. Then um, on the second question that you ask, uh, come up again, please. The second question. I was asking on the aspect of uh, rating. Because there is no pass or yes, so yes. no yeah. I think um, initially Kenyans were used to even announcement of KCSE results where you're told this particular student is number one. Yeah. And then this particular school is the top in the, in the country. And there was some form of unfair competition. That one we, uh, we agree. But then it was wrong to completely eradicate a, a ranking mm -hmm. because... I mean, how are you going to measure these particular students? As much as you're saying that you're focusing on competence, but the reality of life is that uh, life is always about uh, competition. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if in the English Premier League, teams will just be playing and there is no ranking of those particular, uh, those particular teams. So what ought to have been done is to check on this particular ranking. Maybe we have ranking of academics, uh, ranking of co-curricular. There are those who are good in singing, uh, ranking in these drama festivals. These particular actors they be awarded. So it was it was supposed to widen the scope mm -hmm. of these people who are being awarded, such that kuna yule mtoto darasani, Professor Alibora nasema ni mbumbumbu, lakini katika mchezo mm -hmm. ama katika kandanda anacheza vizuri. Wewe mwanafunzi pia atuzwe. And then there is that particular as a society we worshiped grades grades more such that a child who has an A even the way you greet that child with a lot of respect. But this one who scores an E mm. the child is being demeaned and then you take away the human dignity that this child um, is supposed to have. So as a society, yes, it reached a point where it became, <laughs> as people say, toxic relationship. It mm -hmm. became toxic, oh, yeah. this particular ranking, such that we started worshipping it. And principals were doing all manner of uh, crooked uh, strategies to have children cheating in exams mm. and all that. So Just it was time that... Top. Yeah, to be to be to be on the top. Mm. There are some schools even right now where you'll you'll part with two hundred thousand shillings to get admission, especially these particular national schools. As much as we know that uh, the placement of Form One has been left to the Ministry of Education, um, right now there are some uh, schools still that are charging uh, to have learners in that particular school. They extra wow. extra learners. Some of these uh, national schools. It's yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And I feel like we cannot actually, uh, you know, just finish on this conversation in matters pertaining to CBC. There's mm -hmm. a lot that is involved. And yes. we probably can have you over mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just uh, shed more light <laughs> on these issues. So how can people find you on social media if they want to keep this conversation going? If they have questions on matters pertaining to uh, running a school-based uh, franchise. Yeah, I am on Facebook, Jasper Ondimu. And then on Twitter is Jasper underscore uh, Undimu. All right. Thank you very yeah. much for creating time to be with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me as well. <laughs> All right. So that's Jasper Undimu. And uh, we were talking about operating an education-based uh, franchise. Make sure you keep the conversation going at Y254 channel. So you can find me across all my... Across also, all social media handles at Michelle Oshira is where you can find me across all my social media handles at Google. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming right here on Y in the morning.